Alright, so we're in FL Studio 20 and I'm just going to give you a little breakdown of uh, the things you can do in FL Studio. So first of all, we're going to be covering the interface, breaking down each button, what it does, how you can use it. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to also load in your samples and start making beats right away. But to start off this video, I'm just going to go over the basics and explain you everything that there is to know. I'm going to be covering only the most important things. I'm not going to, you know, cover every every single knob because I feel like, you know, you don't need to know them in the very beginning. So let's start off top left corner. We have our file new New pretty much means that you're going to create a new project, a new empty project. We'll skip new from template. Open means that you're going to open up a project file. Save, you're going to save a project file. Export, uh, it means that you're going to export your project file into a full song. You can either export it into WAV file, MP3, OGG, F FLAC. MIDI. Then here, recent projects, you have your projects that you've recently opened. Revert to last backup, it means that it's going to go back to the last project that you worked on. And for example, the project crashed, then you can go back to FL Studio, go to file, revert to last backup. It means that it's going to go back on that last backup that FL Studio created on the crashed project. And you can really kind of save your product file like this. And exit, it means that you're just going to, you know, exit the, the program. All right, heading down to the next option, we have add. Here, you're pretty much going to have all of your plugins. As you can see, we all we have all of the FL Studio 20 stock plugins here. And I also have a couple of my custom plugins that I have. That's pretty much it for this section. Now let's go to options. Here, you can, you know, set up of studio how you like so you got midi up here pretty much if you connect some sort of midi device it will show up here as an input you're going to click on that device and then you're going to click enable then back at audio you can select your device you can select your driver you can select the buffer length sample and quality i would recommend to have it either on 24 or 32 point sync below that you can really hear that the sound kind of turns lower quality all right let's go to info here you can put the title of your song the author the genre of the track you can leave comments a web link and that's pretty much it for this so the most basic thing you need to know here is the volume knob this is the master volume on default it's on 100 percent but you can turn it up all the way to 125 here you have the master pitch Then you got pattern mode and then you got song mode. I will explain what those mean in a second once we start analyzing these buttons over here. Then play, stop the track, record. We're not going to be covering the record button for now because we are going to be recording some vocals later on in the course. And I'm going to show you a little bit more in detail how to do that later on in the course. Master tempo. You can change the tempo of the song to whatever you like. You've got your metronome. You can also change the metronome sound to, for example, a hi-hat or cowbell. But I like to keep it on tick or a hi-hat. Here you got some more recording options. Pretty much if you click this, it's going to wait for some sort of input to start playing and then it's going to record. Then you got your countdown, pretty much it's going to count down one or two bars and then it's going to start recording. So for example, it's going to count down one bar, one, two, three, four, boom, it's going to start recording, right? And you can see there's also an option for two bars, same thing, only two bars, really easy. Blend recording over dub. Pretty much, let's say you're recording something, you're done with the recording, and then you can overdub and record on top of that recording and on top of that recording, etc. Then you got loop recording. Let's just say you have a four bar loop and uh, you can loop that and just record on top of it. So you don't have to make a really long 
sort of loop and just extend it all the time. You can just have this four ball loop and it's going to loop on its own and you can just record on top of it. Type keyboard to piano keyboard. If you uncheck this, you will no longer be able to play instruments with your computer keyboard. Right now I'm hitting the keyboard, nothing's happening. If I click this, I can start playing some notes on my keyboard. Right, so those are the most important things I feel like in this section. Let's go over to the right again. So here we have the song timing. Here we have the peak meter. Here it shows your CPU load, memory usage, amount of voices being processed and do button, which is also a control Z shortcut. Then moving on to the more important buttons, I'm going to start off with the channel rack. This is the section where pretty much everything happens. You can make melodies here, you can make beats here, you can make chords here, you can make pretty much everything one here. And then later on, once you have your base idea covered, you can just transfer all of this into the next button, which we're going to be talking about, and that is the playlist. For, so for example, let me just add in four hi-hats going to turn down the volume here you can see the volume knobs here you can see the channel panning so we can pan it to the right we can pan it to the left we can also mute this so I'm going to lower down the volume of it to 50% and now once you go to the playlist I can build off my song from here so let's just say I have four bars of hi-hats then I can go back to the channel rack select a new pattern which pretty much means that you're going to have a, a new sheet of paper, a new workstation to make your beats, make your melodies, make your chords. And on this pattern, I'm just going to have my claps, I'm going to lower down the volume of, of these. And now I'm just going to have another four bars of claps, another four bars of hi-hats. And now going back to this button, we can switch modes. Pattern mode means that you're going to stay on the pattern and you can only hear audio that's coming in from the pattern, right? And song mode means that you'll hear everything that's on the playlist. Really simple, right? Going back to the channel rack, as I told, we have our different patterns here, which again, pretty much mean, you know, different new sheets of paper where you can draw, let's just say like that. And uh, there's quite a lot of options in channel rack that we are going to be covering further on in the course. So let me tell you a little bit more about the playlist. So the playlist is pretty much this place where you combine all of your ideas that come from the channel rack or some sort of recorded audio samples, stuff like that, right? And you can, you know, build off your song from here. So as you can see, the playlist is separated by four bars all the time. This really helps you to understand where you are in your track and to understand when a certain section needs to begin and whatnot. And here you can really do everything. So if you go to top left, different tools here, we have the draw. So for example, we can you know delete all of these using right click and once you place a pattern it's just going to place it as one whereas in if you go to the paintbrush if you press it and hold it, it's going to automatically give you a bunch of these and the way to insert patterns into the playlist you can either go to the playlist and just kind of you know select let's say pattern two and just put it here or you can do an easier thing, which they added to FL Studio 20. You can just go to the pattern like this and you know drag it into the playlist. You can also double click and it's going to lead you into that pattern. Now I'm going to skip a couple of these buttons because I don't really use them myself either. And I feel like they're not as important as they are, but the slice tool is pretty cool. So you can just slice up your samples and we got the select you can select it like this you can select it go to the draw tool and just move the whole thing so yeah, it, this is really useful when you want to rearrange your project file let's say you have you know your intro here 
and then you have your course here and then you have let's just say I have a bridge but in the process of making the track I've decided that I want the bridge to be somewhere here what we can do is we can you know select and just kind of reposition on the whole project file then you have the zoom if you click it's just going to zoom into your project file and this is really useful especially when you're slicing up some sort of samples And you can also zoom out by just right clicking or you can use little handles here and you can also make your project file bigger or smaller. As you can see in the playlist we have a lot of tracks. It goes up to 500 tracks which is a lot of tracks but if you're working with a lot of recordings those really do come in handy. Right here we can see that mute and solo, you can mute a track. If you right click, it will mute all of the tracks but that track that you selected. Let's just say I have let's say a melody here and I want to ju just listen to that melody. I can right click, it's going to mute everything but I will hear the melody. You can do the same thing by using playback. So let's just say you're, you know, someone to track something's playing and you want to just hear a certain thing separately while it's playing. You can just, just say, I have a hi-hat and a clap playing here and I just want to hear the hi-hat. Right, I feel like we've covered all the basics that there is in FL Studio, right? So moving on to the mixer. So let me assign a sound to the mixer to show you what we can do with it. So going back to the channel rack, let's just say we have our clap. We can also change the color of it. Let's try this. And now we select it by left clicking, going to the playlist, and then we can select an insert where we want the sound to be. We can do it in two ways. We can either go to the channel rack and just select the mixer track right here, or we can go to the mixer Let's just say I like the number five. I can right click, channel routing, route select the channel to this track. And there you go. Now we have our hi-hat in the mixer. Over here we can see the decibels of our track. Here we can adjust the volume of our sound. We can mute it. We can pan it to the right, we can pan it to the left. We can also reposition our sample within the mixer by holding Alt and just moving with arrows, right or left. Here is the master volume. Again, we can see the decibels. We can adjust the volume of it. We can mute it, we can pan it. And do fun stuff like that right now what can we do with the sample we can go to the right section here and we have a bunch of slots we have 10 slots here and we can pretty much add different effects on here right so for example we can add a reverb to the sound we can adjust it accordingly do whatever we like we can adjust the volume of the effect we can mute the effect completely. Here we have different audio inputs for recordings. Here we have this little three-way band EQ where you can just quickly EQ your sample. And I think that's pretty much the basics of this mix. And now looking at our last thing that I want to show you is the browser. So here we can preview all of the things that we have in our project file. I mainly use it just to browse through my sample packs, but if you don't have any sample packs, you will have free sounds available to you from FL Studio. Right here at the pack section, let's for example go to drums, let's go to kicks, and we can just choose different samples from here, and we can 
easily drag them into the channel rack like that and now we have a sound in the channel rack you can also insert sounds into the channel rack just by clicking on the sound selecting the input and just pressing enter boom it's going to replace the sound for example attack kick 16 press enter and out here that's how you load samples. If it's a little bit confusing, I'm gonna load a couple of more samples in so you kind of understand how it works. So again, we have clap, you just take it, boom, it's here. Let's go to pattern three, for example, and now we can make simple beat. And again, if you don't hear a sample playing in the channel rack, just look at your sound mode. It has to be on pattern in order for you to preview it in pattern mode. And if you want to preview it in the playlist, then it has to be on song mode. Oh, and also a really cool shortcut that I always use is close all windows, F12. It's just going to close up everything that you have. So for example, you have a bunch of different windows open, you can't find what you want. Then you can just go to view, close all windows, it's going to close up everything. So there you go guys, I feel like I've covered up all the basics that you need to know inside the FL Studio 20 interface. In the next lesson, we're going to be making a cool hip hop beat. So stay tuned and uh, I'll be waiting for you in the next video. Let's <laughs> go.